First thing first, I need to get this straight. I like this game. I do not hate this game. This is a good game, but it is not as good as everyone says it to be. People say that this game is a 10 out of 10, a 9 out of 10. You need to buy this game if you love JRPG, blah blah blah, all that stuff. Please don't get influenced by that. And I'm here trying to tell you honestly what this game is, do I recommend it, and things to keep in mind when you want to buy this game. Being this is some sort of a review, there will be some critic that needs to be addressed because this game is surely not flawless and there are some aspects of the game that maybe you will not enjoy and because of it, you just wasted 60 bucks. And I also want to mention that I played this game at launch, so I'll be reviewing the launch state of the game, not the updated one. Maybe I'll talk about the updated uh, one just a bit, but mostly at launch day. Because I really hate games that get updated when you already bought the game because, man, it says that it is not a complete product, so yeah, I, I hate it. So let's get into the review. As always, I will provide the timestamps below if you need to skip to different sections. First, I want to discuss the visuals and performance because this is what everybody noticed first when the game was first announced. There's no doubt that the presentation of this game is amazing from the art style and the animated cutscenes, they are very appealing to the eyes. First, you'll be greeted with an amazing intro where all the main characters are there and I know they are just flexing the visuals in this game from that intro alone. Even with this kind of visual, playing this game is still fun. No stutters, the performance is just top notch. Even when I played it at 30 FPS, yes, I know it is kinda laggy for sure, but almost no stutters. So overall, it's a good experience, so you don't have to worry about that. Even when you wanna play it on your potato PC, it can still run smoothly at 30 FPS. I played this on my old PC using a GTX 1066GB and it ran flawlessly. The reason why I said that is my old PC because now I have a very new PC with RTX 4080 and I know it will just run any game smoothly so I was actually surprised when I played this on my GTX 1060 so yeah go for it man. The only complaint with this kind of art style and gorgeousness is that the visibility when playing this game can be a little bit distracting. Well, to be honest, not a little bit, well, kind of distracting. Because there's so much going on with all the flashy effects, sometimes you cannot see what is the boss doing or what the enemies are doing. Which can make you get hit, and yes, I know most of the bosses have this red telegraph, but still, some attacks don't have it. And when you play this in hard mode, since it is challenging, you need to get all the visibility you can get. I know some people can bear with this, but some also cannot, so do keep in mind for other players too. For options, it's just textures with such a minimal effort to the graphic settings. Maybe they're expecting you to play this game in a mid-high-end PC or even a PS5? I don't know man. There's not much to it and kind of disappointing with how beautiful this game is. I wish they could provide more graphical adjustment, but nonetheless, the performance of this game is outstanding. And how are you feeling? I feel fine. Story. I think it is also important because this is the continuation of the Grand Blue Fantasy game. I mean the gacha game. You kind of have to play the gacha game first to understand who Lyria is and who the captain is. But if you don't play the gacha game, I think it's still fine because even I don't play the gacha game and I can understand most of the story. The story is a bit short, it is linear but to the point, maybe like 8 to 10 hours. Some people might complain about this because they expected more from a JRPG and as you know, most JRPGs are always long like 20 to 30 hours. So yeah, this game is short and linear, it is not a game that will make you immerse through the story like Spider-Man, Red Dead Redemption, Final Fantasy VII Remake or even God of War or even Persona 5 Royale or Persona 4 Golden, whatever it is, Suikoden, yeah, just whatever JRPGs it is. But you will get an amazing 100-hour-ish hours of content and 200-hour-ish if you want to play this game for a full 100%. Of course, they mostly focus on the content aspect of this game, like side quests and end game content, because you will unlock all the dungeons and all the bosses and side quests 
later after you defeat this story. It's not something bad per se, it's just something to keep in mind when buying this game because you need to spend 8 to 12 hours first before getting to the real content of this game. And sometimes the story is static with only one picture and not engaging at all but when it goes to the cutscenes, it is always blowing me away. Very good animation and expressions and makes us want more of it. Honestly, it's like watching a Netflix series. This game is just gorgeous, the animation and the lip sync and the expressions of all the characters are good. Yes, just that good. Even with the voice acting. And because of that, when the story is a bit lacking, it can be forgiven. People say that the pacing of the story can be better, and I also agree with that. It can be better, but all in all, the story is interesting and makes us want more of it. So yeah, please, give us Grand Blue Fantasy Reeling 2. I wanna know more about this world. Naughty children! <laughs> this is power! Yeah. They're in my sights! Gameplay. This is where the main fun of the game is. And I gotta tell you man, the combat in this game is addicting as hell. When you start playing this game, you don't wanna stop because there are so many things you can do. And playing this game in hard mode is actually challenging or difficult. Even though you don't have different boss mechanics when playing in different difficulty, it is still a challenging run. So, playing this game in hard mode after each chapter, I find myself having to grind a bit more from the dungeons and the quests because you will be underleveled when reaching to the next main story quest and you cannot just mow down enemies. But I think if you play it in easy or action mode, you can just push through without needing a good setup or even grinding. Also, if you are having a hard time playing this game, there is auto play in this game, like most gacha games. Even though this is a full paid game, yeah, it's kinda weird though. And they call it full assist mode. Honestly, it's fun turning that on and seeing the AI moving on its own. Because when turning full assist mode on, the character can auto dodge and dodge everything perfectly most of the time. And if you say that it will not be fun and what's the fun in that, why buy it if there's autoplay? Well, there's no need to worry about that because when you reach the real end game, you cannot use full assist mode and speaking of the end game, let's talk about it because this is where there are some problems that may need fixing. So after the ending in the main story, you get a lot more quests and new story of course. I don't know why reviewers don't say this at all, they only mention more quests. So after defeating it, you will get the ending but that's not really the ending. You will play as it in the next main story. Yes, you first have to grind a little bit, defeat all the main quests or side story for you to progress through his story. And don't worry if you don't like grinding that much, there is an option for you to toggle full assist mode so that AI will automatically play the game for you. And if you want some challenge, you can always replay the boss dungeons. I know I mentioned autoplay a lot, but don't worry in the end game, like I said, you cannot use autoplay. You actually have to learn the boss's attack patterns. So yeah, this way the game is challenging and engaging. After defeating its main story, you will unlock extreme and proud difficulty dungeons and you do not have access to autoplay. To be honest, uh, I know this is, uh, I know you will kill me, but I don't like it because it restricts you from a good quality of life. Because at the end game, you will have to grind to get the most powerful weapon in the game by repeating the same dungeon over and over and over again. Yes, there is auto repeat dungeon, but that's pretty much it. And the grind is a bit frustrating because first, the weapon you will get is random. It's not always the character that you are using. And if you are saying that you don't need autoplay and love the grind, why are there so many AFK guys to grind this game? Surely you want to be able to autoplay this game because the AI dodges better than you. It's a fact. Now, I know you don't always have to repeat one dungeon over and over and over again because in some cases you actually need to go to another dungeon to get the specific material to upgrade your weapon. Secondly, the drop rate for Terminus weapon is horrible. Well, Terminus is the most powerful weapon at launch. And you don't always get it if you play the dungeon, and so you will have to repeat the same dungeon over and over again. 
Like I said, without a good quality of life and no auto play in the pro difficulty, it is quite frustrating to say the least. Look, this is not a Monster Hunter game, even though I know most people compare this to Monster Hunter-ish game. In some way it is true, because we are battling a monster and going to dungeons by accepting quests, but every world or dungeon in Monster Hunter is dynamic. Imagine playing MH over and over again in the same dungeon, probably for like 50 times with one boss in a dungeon, and no gathering, just to get the random materials and not for the one that you are using. But in Monster Hunter, the world is dynamic, you can gather stuff in one dungeon, there can be two or more monsters, and you can pick and choose the fight that you want, and you don't always have to defeat the monster. You can capture them too, right, which rewards you better than just killing them. But everything in Grand Blue is static. You go into one dungeon, and then you kill the boss, that's it. But if you are itching that Monster Hunter game, because there's no new Monster Hunter, then this will satisfy you in some ways. Look, I'm not saying it's bad. This is a new game from Psy Games, and what Psy Games specialize the most is gacha game, right? And this game's dungeon system shows it all. It is a simple gacha game mechanic where you go into one dungeon and kill that boss, that's it. And if you say that this is fun, then go play any gacha game with no auto mode and repeat that dungeon for hundreds of times. Even every player in Genshin Impact complained about this a lot at the beginning, I don't know about now though, where they have to go into the dungeon over and over and over again, maybe like 100 times, and still not get what they want, and you need to play it manually. I know some people actually like the grind, especially with this combat system, because I do have to admit, that the combat is amazing, it's so satisfying and rewarding. Well, there is also a good thing about the dungeon being this simple. Maybe for some people who don't have much time to play and want to experience a good combat system, then you can do that in this game. So yeah, I mean, that is good. I mean, I get it with all the praises this game got, but they haven't played it till the end, I think. And I feel side games put too many gacha games mechanic or system in a paid game without the quality of life of a good modern gacha game. It kinda pissed me off a little bit to be honest because if they did not restrict full assist mode, maybe it's bearable. To add to that, we have this thing called sigils, basically like armors that can make us stronger and have passive abilities, but you can craft it one at a time. Remember, I played this at launch, and I'm reviewing this game in launch version, and not the updated one, I know they fixed this, okay? So, yeah. Even though you can also get this from boss drop, so what is the problem if you ask me? Well, when you craft sigils, what sigils you get is random. You need to press the button over and over and over again to get what you want. One at a time plus random is not a good combination, because at the end of the game you will have so many crafting materials and you want to max out your character, at least give us sliders, you know, so we can craft 10 at a time or even 20 at a time. Yes, I know, it has been fixed on the latest patch, but I just want you to know that this wasn't there at launch. Like, why? And this problem is not only in crafting. Even when maxing out abilities for each character, note that we have 20 playable characters in this game at launch. I know there will be more now, like maybe 22 right now, because they have Tuyen and Soyan, and they will add more, I don't know who's the name, but I think it's like Lucilius or something. So 20 playable characters with different skills and abilities and we need to max out each and every one of them. And you need to know there's no quality of life to just unlock all abilities or anything. So we have to press one by one and they haven't fixed this. And this is just a waste of time, honestly. The lack of quality of life in a game full of RNG is annoying, okay? It is really really annoying. Animation for the combat is smooth and responsive, nothing is clunky, the combat is just top tier, all the boss fights are awesome and engaging, but what about the general mobs? What I can say is that I don't really enjoy it because they are pretty bland and generic, I really don't know how to put it in a better word, like they are dumb and we just hit them for story reasons or like an introduction to the combat, well I guess that's the purpose of mobs in the game right, okay, so yeah. Every boss battle feels engaging and I gotta say man, sometimes it can be over the top from the visuals, from how the boss attacks. They have this clever way that the boss can be very pleasing to the eyes 
and making us want more of the boss fights. It's, it's insane, right? They know what they're doing here. And actually, this game has quite a bit of a gimmicks in the main story. You can control a cannon or even a mech. And I like that very much. It's like taking a break from all the boss fights. Oh my god, yes, they have a lot of boss fights in this game. So having this kind of mini game, like to chill down a bit, have some fun. It's not just mindless boss fights. It's a good thing. As I said, there were 20 playable characters at launch, but now they added two more. Every character plays differently from each other, and we can play all of them. All of them. 20 playable characters, and wow, I love things like this. I was actually quite surprised by this because I thought the characters don't have that much depth, but boy was I wrong. They have skills for each character that play differently from each other and have purpose. You can build any character to be a DPS or a support, but of course they excel in one specific role, but still can be very flexible. Again, I love the combat in this game, you can use ultimate and if you chain it with all your party members, you have an extra all out attack similar to Persona games. It's awesome and climactic, making us want more and it does get very addicting. And of course they have link attack, right. Surely there are things that I need to address and that is the gameplay in the main story. I mean the pacing between the combat and the story. It is quite short. What I mean by this is that when you're engaged with the combat, sometimes you will proceed to the next main story cutscenes. And to be honest, it can be quite disappointing at times because you want to play more and are already engaged in the game. But it cuts you off to these mediocre cutscenes. Even when my girlfriend saw me playing this game, she doesn't play games by the way. She's like, babe, you're only playing 20% of the game and 80% is the story. Like, why even buy this game? What she is trying to say is that I paid this premium price for a game that doesn't even have that much gameplay. Like, why buy it? I mean, she doesn't know about the end game content yet of this game. But yeah, that's the main story for you guys. Of course, if you play story mode and solo in this game, you will have to depend on AI. AI is both dumb and smart at the same time, but with this much AI in the party, I don't see any options that we can do to control it. Maybe target the same enemy or save this skill or use heal when HP is below 30% and so on. Just anything to control your AI members because every game, even from the PS2 era, has this. Example, Final Fantasy XII. But I still love the AI because when I am down, they are gonna run to me and revive me. So they are very smart and they can dodge mostly anything in this game. Like the AI is just that good, man. That good. Now, speaking of AI and bosses, ah man, the last boss fight is an auto scroller and I don't like it at all. I know it's more cinematically climactic, but it just kind of annoys me that you cannot speedrun this thing or play it faster. I mean, it's not bad if you like auto scrollers like this, but I just don't like it. Well, same goes for Final Fantasy VII Remake. Some of the bosses are auto scrollers, right? Like Sephiroth, you need to get to this part, and now the second part, and then the third part. So, I don't know, it's just not my cup of tea. But yeah, I know, it is more cinematically climactic. And I do remember this end game boss dungeon, like there are two of them at one dungeon. And my god, I don't know how to feel about this, man. I have a mixed feeling about this. In a way, I like it, and it's exciting, like we get to fight two bosses, it's so exciting. But... At the same time, it's fucking blinding my eyes. Just look at this, man. Can you even see the telegraph and tell me what's going on? And I have to be honest, I use mods or hacks or cheats just to give you an example of this. Like, I cannot see anything. I know some people can actually do it, but holy shit, it's blinding. And not a fun time repeating the same thing over and over and over again just to get the material that this boss drop. To add that, we cannot even set our own camera distance, well, at launch, so lock on is also pretty shitty in this game. I mean, they kind of fixed it a little bit at the latest patch, but I still find it very, very shitty. Yeah, they need to fix that. I want to apologize, I know, I feel like I'm complaining a lot in this game, but issues like this need to be addressed so they can make a better game, like a better second game, or make the game better after the next patch. Again. It is not a bad game. 
I was super pumped with this game, super excited. I think this is one of the most anticipated JRPG release for me because I like gacha games and playing Grand Blue in PC or you know the original Grand Blue the gacha game is kind of hard for me to get into. But I know Grand Blue is a big franchise, so I want to experience it myself. And surely this game does the job pretty well for introducing us to the Grand Blue world. And even though the story needs a better pacing, it is still very engaging and interesting and I need more of it. With all that being said, the most important thing with this much combat or gameplay and boss fights and content, this game feels a bit balanced and yes, I know you can probably cheese every boss fight in the game, but when you actually play it, for me, I think it's it's quite balanced. And not to mention that you can get 100 hour ish content in this game, so that is amazing. <laughs> My opinion on this game is that this game is very, very good. I'd give it a 7 out of 10 in my critic form, okay, in my critic self, but for me myself, I would give this game an 8 out of 10 because of the grand blue of how the visuals work, of how the combat works. The combat is fun as hell, but I always do wonder what will it be if Platinum Games made the combat system in this game. I don't know, probably more fun, honestly, because they know what they are doing. At this stage, this game still needs uh, some quality of life improvement, and hopefully the next patch or the next big update, we can get that. Please add auto dodge or something to this game. I think they added auto healing sigils if I'm not mistaken. And I think that's nice because in proud mode, that is very hard to deal with. And for some of us, we cannot see shit man with all the visual effects. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's just over the top, okay? It's really, really over the top and I love it. Don't get me wrong. I like it. Now the question is, is it worth buying at full price? For me I think it's not, maybe get a 20% off, I think it's worth it. But do I recommend it? Yes, I do recommend it, because if you want to try a good JRPG, this will scratch your itch. And if you do want like a Monster Hunter-ish game, try this one. And most of you guys who plays Monster Hunter loves JRPG and I know that. So with that being said, that is the end of my review. Thank you guys so much for watching this one and hopefully you will stick around and if you like the video give it a like maybe you know sub or something i don't know man all that good jazz once again thank you guys so much for watching this video hope you guys have a great day and as always have fun with your games